Welcome to Hobby Sound. My name is Corey Ableton, certified trainer. And because of that, we're actually going to be talking about Ableton today and in the future. I'm going to try to focus more of these videos on a lot of Ableton stuff that I've kind of been teaching and also kind of learning on my own of coming from the last two years of doing all the modular and outboard stuff to now kind of coming back around and really putting those two things together, putting together the editing and the sort of arranging powers of Ableton with the sound design and everything kind of happening in the modular world. So we're going to be focusing more on Ableton in the future. And this is kind of a jumping off point and something that I've been doing and kind of came across like right when Ableton 11 came out. Um, but this whole idea was spawned by one of my students, Talia. Um, I had given her the task, like I do with most of my students, to set up a template. And then that's, this is kind of what I start with, um, with anybody, kind of no matter what their level is, because I feel like it's so helpful and it really is the concrete foundation of being able to get things done and to be able to find yourself in the flow state more times than not. And the reason for that, the analogy that I like to use when it comes to a template is that say that you're an artist and you have booked time at a professional recording studio. When you as the artist show up to the studio, everything is already plugged in. Everything is ready to go. The mics are hot. The phantom power is on if you need it. The keyboards are set up. The drums have been mic'd. The engineers there in their chair ready to hit record and ready to go. And I feel like that for a lot of people is what's missing as like, if you're an individual producer, like I feel like a lot of us open up Ableton or whatever the DAW is and just kind of stare into the gray abyss as it were. And that's what the idea of a template and why it's so foundational and so important is that your studio should be set up. It should be ready to go. So that's that's how I think of the template. It's your own little virtual studio. It should change month by month. I think you should always be adding to it and switching things up. And now in Ableton 11, it's much easier to do, to do that because you do have this uh, template section in the browser, which we'll go over. I'll show you all that. Um, and this whole sleeper idea, I feel like, is really powerful to kind of keep keep things organized and not sort of overload your brain with ha having to look at too much on the screen, but also making it very valuable and helpful to get yourself off the ground as fast as possible. So let's take a look at Ableton. Now, by default, when you open Ableton, I think when you first open Ableton, it'll greet you with like the demo song. But then when you open a new set, it's usually just going to have a you know one audio track one midi track two return channels one of those being delay the other being reverb so if i actually pop out i'll pop real quick out of full screen and so what you can do is that once you have built a little template you can do this thing here where it says uh save as template or you can do save as default set now save as default set is also going to save it as a template, but it's also going to replace whatever the default session is when you open a new session in Ableton. So usually, you know, this is something that has changed in 11. It used to just be this save as default set, and then you'd have to keep track of your templates. Uh, but now if we go into the browser here and go down to templates... You see, I've saved like quite a few templates down here. Um, so you have them for access here. So also another thing that I like to do is if I, let's see, if I go here, there's this uh, blank template, which is basically just the default Ableton template. It's actually even smaller. It just has one audio channel in it. Um, a lot of times I will use that. I will open that first because that allows Ableton to just open like that and then maybe go through my templates here and kind of decide what I want to do from there. So the the templates are very very powerful in Ableton 11 and they've become even more powerful with the take lanes. 
Now, the take lanes are usually and have been designated for recording vocalists or live instruments for the most part. But I would say for vocalists, it's the most powerful thing because essentially what it lets you do is just kind of record a loop and record the same lines over and over. And instead of before, you'd be met with a just a long audio loop that you'd have to go through and chop up to try to make what we call a comp. But now if you have this loop bar set and you record and the you know the playhead is going through here and once it gets to here, it's going to loop back around. It's going to basically toss that next recording down in a take lane you know, basically as long as you keep recording and then you can go through and just take little pieces of it. So that's great for recording, but it's really, really good for holding loops or samples almost like as a little like, like a, like I almost think you would have like a record crate of like, you know, stuff that you really dig that you want to just kind of have ready to go at any time. So in this little example of this, this is kind of just a, just a very simple template of having a drum group with some mild processing that should actually be down there something like that I think that was meant to be on this uh, top drums but anyways so we have a drum group you know just glue compressor nothing crazy and then I have this little music group that just has a bass and an electric piano with some simple processing so take lanes sleeper so I have my ghost sidechain that's already set up and already have the uh, sidechain compression ready to go. But as you see, there's no clips or anything here. But if I right click and do this show take lanes, uh huh. See, I've nestled in this little ghost sidechain track. So I can just select this and then hit enter. And then we can go to this little Afro house drum rack that I made. And maybe we'll just use this is just a kick. So here we got that. So already, we got a kick. And now this is kind of where it gets really powerful. I have this top drums channel. And this was, like like in most of my sessions, I will have basically this exact same channel. But the idea of a top drums channel is that this is going to be where I throw in percussion loops from Splice or just little things to kind of throw on top. So I usually kind of spend a lot of time figuring out, you know, what the kick drum is going to be, what the snare and maybe like main hat is going to be. And then as I kind of build out the song, I will just sort of sprinkle on. It's almost like a like a seasoning and we're tossing a little basil on there, right? So if I do show take lanes for this, see, we have all this stuff in here already and it's ready to go. Basically, this is just takes a little bit of prep work. Um... When you're making your own template, you know, you could set up a channel like this. I'll actually do it real quick. So I'll do um, command or control T to make a new audio channel. We would call this top drums. And then I will right click, do show take, oops, right click, do show take lanes. We're not going to see anything because we need to add the take lane. So we add a take lane and then you can actually just click on this and do, no, you actually you can't do that. <laughs> I was going to say you could duplicate it. But you can't, but you can do shift alt T. So we do shift alt T and then you can just add as many take lanes as you would like and then just drag loops in there. So I'll delete that. Let's go back to this. So really the power of this is that if you already have some stuff in here that you like, like we could just take this entire loop and you just select it and then hit enter. So you got that. Um, these Oliver samples are so great. So we could try this one. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. But say we wanted to like kind of do a little bit of editing, if you will, or just kind of make this a little like fresher. So the beauty of the take lanes, again, going back to the idea of comping, is that we could just pull little pieces of each of these. And again, I'm just kind of clicking and selecting and then hitting enter and we can just very very quickly make like our own sort of like edit of a loop so we actually we need a little you know maybe something like that right there and then we could just take this and we could well, actually we need this over here we need more 
that little piece, and then eh, let's say that piece. And then I'll just duplicate this. So maybe get rid of that clap at the beginning. And then to add a little flare on this end as kind of a little mini fill, we'll just like use that. I mean, I don't even know what these sound like. We're just kind of winging it. Okay, so say I'm happy with that. We'll actually go back to this uh, Afro rack and I'll grab the, uh, the kick and snare one and toss that up there. And actually this one has a hat on it, so we'll use that as a little, there we go. Let me turn this down just a little bit. I'll do command shift C to basically just capture that little thing that I played. We can select all of those and just move it a little bit. And then maybe, yeah, we could get away with command Uing for our uh, quantizing. What the heck note was that that I was hitting? Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. I'm on the G. And we'll just take that, just real quick, just as a little bat bat. Command J on that. Then we have our effects down here as well. Again, we could just pull that out of there. Maybe I gotta turn that volume down on there. Um, and then maybe we just take this and just duplicate. Bam, bam, bam. So you can see, let me look at the timer. I mean, I've been recording this video for 13 minutes and we already have something going. So this is, to me, this is like the real power of using the sleeper template. And we could even, again, I don't want this video to get too long, but if I pop out of that so we don't see those and then just duplicate this whole thing and then go to the take lanes for, not for Afro Rack, but for the top drums. So, I mean, you can really go down the rabbit hole with this sort of like comping thing. Um, we can, again, just to like add some flair and some variation. I'll actually make this full loop here. But so, you can again, just kind of add little pieces here. This is just, you know, we're just making small changes to this already... You know, this started out as was a four bar, four bar loop. And then we duplicated it. We added this little like fill sort of thing. So that's just a different piece of one of these. And then we're going through this duplicate again, but just making subtle changes. Like we just toss that there, do that there, and do a little something different for the fill. And then we have... <laughs> And 
And of course, if I command J these, like again, we can build off of this like very easily because we already have these sounds kind of set up. Ooh, let's do like a da I don't think I have any like rides in here. There we go. We could actually do. Yeah, we could just do something like that. Bam, 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 bam. Anyways, I hope that that has brought you some inspiration and maybe make you think about what your template is looking like. And again, like, have your studio set up. Have the little virtual studio ready to go. Um, a template doesn't need to be anything except for the stuff that you want there ready to go. It could be serum presets. It could be, you know, some operator patch. It could be, you know, a bunch of loops. Whatever it is, have that stuff set up for you so that you are able to make music and not spend a bunch of time in the browser searching for things when you should be being creative and making music. I hope you found this helpful and I hope that this helps you on your creative journey. If you are looking to have Ableton lessons slash coaching or any help with music and want one-on-one -on -one sessions, please go to funthingsfunlife.com and check out the scheduling section there. You can read all about my story and what I'm doing with Fun Things, Fun Life. And I hope to see you in a Zoom session. And I hope you have a blessed day. Bye.